this video, we're going to go ahead and join one of the Twitter spaces and put it in this YouTube video and have some commentary about uh, Bitcoin. And if Craig Wright actually pushed the button towards, you know, this entire hype, hyper Bitcoinization moment happening. So let's see if we can make this happen right now. Stand by. Hey, GM, GM, everybody. Hey, man, GM. How's everybody doing? So this is uh, this is the Twitter space. I'm really glad to be here. You know, this is freaking great, man. This Twitter. Thanks space. for coming, man. Yeah. No, Good I got you your going. voicemail. Is it Andreas? Yeah, Andreas. Who left me a voicemail? Oh, me. No, not me. Bose. Bose. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was yeah. cool. I got your voicemail. And we laughed about that. Uh, you know, I, Twitter's got voicemail now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Super cool. We laughed about that because uh, uh, you probably thought that I was trying to mooch off you and get a free place to stay in London. You know, I'm like, oh, yeah, no, that's not, that was very kind of you and very generous. Uh, you know, but, you know, I, I would never, I would, I would always get my own place, but I would very, very thoughtful of you to allow me to have accommodations. <laughs> that was, that was. It was a knee jerk. I was just like, um, "Come, come, stay in my hovel, please." Oh yeah, you know, yeah. You know, like I, you know, it's very. I was very thoughtful gesture. I wouldn't take you up on it, you know, but it's thoughtful to ask. It's great to, you know, nice to do it. So, fair comment. Um, I, I, so you are coming here to London for the court case. Well, are you definitely? That's, uh, you know, am, am I coming to the London for the court case? So it's uh, it's up in the air right now. Uh, you know, I've kind of left it in the hands of CoinGeek for that because they're the ones that are going to have to sponsor, you know, to basically allow me into the courtroom, Calvin and them. So I don't I don't think that anybody can just go in there and do anything they want. I, mean, I could be wrong. Do you guys know? Have you guys been to the courtroom there? I believe it's... No, I don't know. It may be a public... It could well be a public thing. I'll find out. Yeah, it would be. That would be like super crucial because right now I don't have any any access, and I wouldn't want to be out there if I can't get in. Um, and so I'm I'm meeting with Coin Geek Net. Was it next week? I have to check the date, but I'm going to do a video with Coin Geek here coming up soon, and we're going to talk. Me and uh, uh, Kurt and Calvin invited me, you know. So, but it's a matter of uh, just putting it all together. It works on my schedule for sure. It works. But now. it's a long, it's kind of a long period. I mean, it's, what is it? February 6th till the middle of April or early April or something. That's a long period. I mean, it would have to be <laughs> like a week or two for me. That's probably all I could probably do. Uh, it seems like Kurt's right. going to be there for a long time. Kurt's going to have his whole family there. Wow. Yeah. So what, uh, what is it that you guys are, uh, I mean, what is it that you guys are, uh, did you have a subject that you were discussing here today? I so again, about, about Craig. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So let's give you a heads up what we've been doing lately. Like since the BSV has been pumping, like every day we've sort of been like loosely coordinating to have, try to have a BSV 24 seven space going. So uh, BSV is Bitcoin, the frog with the McDonald's hat next to you. He uh, has been a like amazing guy, like hosting spaces for a long time. He's in Europe, and then we'll like take the t torch and like pass the torch. So he was just doing a space for probably like 12, 15 hours today, and now it's like close to bedtime. So now we're passing the torch. So we're just trying to get loosely coordinated whenever someone's available to get a twenty four seven BSV support desk. So anything goes. We can talk about anything, um, and sometimes it gets crazy, but we try to keep it, um, you know, balanced into uh, Bitcoin. So yeah. Wow. That's like one of the most amazing, unique things about this, uh, this entire being involved in Bitcoin, because it's just, a, it's organic what you guys are doing. It's not like anyone's telling you to do that. No one's paying you to do that. I mean, right. I don't, I don't think so. It's just this organic. That's like kind of goes along the lines with, uh, you know, 
some of the other visionary guys that you know they've talked about how bitcoin is a is a company you know it's it's kind of like putting yourself back in the day you know when you get your first first job out of college and you know you're really excited about the company being a company man and you're going to work together with your and i'll tell you a story here for me when i first got my i worked at macy's which is a department store in college selling furniture and then uh you know when i was in college and just worked my way up in sales to the top and then uh, while i was there you know i i got the opportunity to go into a company called ameriquest which was a big mortgage company subprime mortgage company here in california all over the united states and so what uh it was like when I got to the company, I was one of the first guys from my fraternity to get in there. And we just, it, it started just popping off and we were just starting to have, I was having huge success with it. And so then all of a sudden we, um, I started calling in the guys from the fraternity, Delta Chi. We had like 20, uh, we had about 15 to 20 guys in one branch from the fraternity. And it just became, we were, we were all part of the company. We were all together, like unified in a, in a, in a group However, we were really all part of the company and the company was called AmeriQuest at the time. And so, but it was just like this, you know, it was like a brotherhood in a way. It was, it was, it was a total brotherhood. It was all guys. There was no women. So, you know, at all, not that they weren't allowed. They just weren't drawn to it. And so not that this isn't uh, women aren't here. It sounds like there's going to be really smart, intelligent women, the women at BSV and other places I've seen, but this is like, uh, you know, that type of environment from what I'm seeing, but it's more of an online space than the company is Bitcoin where everybody just by being a part of it, the opportunity grows, you know, and we had this thing at the time where everybody who see, if we came together and we hit a certain number as a team, we all got, a, we all, we all got paid a bonus. We got, we got a $10,000 bonus for the month just for hitting a certain number as a team. So we, what we did is we'd like work around the clock. Like you guys are all doing here, sitting on these, calls on the phones and just driving it until we hit the goal. And, you know, it, it may be a advantageous to set a goal. It sounds like the goal is support and helping things grow, but has anyone considered about what like some of the goals would be for like a space like this? What, 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 what's, what would a, what would a success look like? Let's say you, that you do this for the next 30 days. What would success look like at the end of it? What would a goal, what would a goal be? Bo, Bose, have you thought about that? Uh, only briefly, uh, and I didn't comment to any um, really strong answers. I think at the moment, you know, one of the problems that, well, I don't know, does anyone else want to, does anyone else want to speak to that goals over the next 30 days? Because it's a good question. Yeah, I mean, I would just say is if we can keep like 30 people in the room of listening uh, as an average, um, you know, try to consistently stay at like 30 people that are in the space. I mean, I think that could be a good metric. Anything else? Well, that's, yeah, no, that's great. Sounds like a very, uh, yeah, no, that's so by doing 30 people and what, um, have you, have you thought about like what that's going to do? Is it going to build a, is it, is it going to build a goal of like building momentum? Is that the, uh, see the outcome? Yeah, hundred percent. You know, it creates excitement. It keeps people excited and engaged and they'll like, you know, maybe be listening in a space. Maybe somebody comes up, asks a question. And then that person in the space that's listening can like quickly answer the question. So it'll jump up as a speaker or yeah. something like that. You know, just a sense of community and maybe someone outside of BSV can come in and uh, ask questions about the ecosystem and whatnot. And we're just here to answer and give all questions and give good vibes and be kind and accepting anybody and everybody. Everyone's all welcome. Yeah. Sounds like a, a well, I mean, here's the questions that I always get like, well, so, well, how do I get started? You know, <laughs> right. So this could be a place where people, where I could send people to, and they could say, you know, go here and find out, you know, what, what's a good place. hundred I mean, percent. Yeah. Yeah. Bitcoin SV support desk 24 seven on Twitter spaces. Go, go, go hang with those guys. <laughs> oh, hey, please do this, man. Listen, I don't mean to butt in. I have my hand raised, but I never get uh, any attention or called on, so I just rudely interrupted. I'm sorry, guys. Apologize. Ahead, for I, didn't see, I didn't see your hand. You must have a glitch, but go ahead. All, all gravy, baby. I just caught the uh, 
the, the tail end of this conversation, and already I could tell that everybody's on to something here. I just got that vibe, you know what I mean? Like the vibe and, and the sense and the feeling that I just jumped into a really good space that's going to open up another realm of ideas and possibly get people to, hey, look over here. Look what we're doing. We're innovating again. We're number one again. So these are just cycles inside of cycles, right? Because, you know, everybody knows now BSV was the first one ever to do microtransactions. BSV was the first one ever to have a tokens protocol. BSV was the first one to ever have a decentralized exchange in real life, a global order book, so on and 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 so on. And now we're seeing all these other chains do what we've been doing for the last five, six years and, and, and such. And now's the time to actually do something to get more attention again. So we can repeat this cycle because in ultimate reality, it's just cycles inside of cycles. <laughs> it's like these never ending cycles. So just just wanted to put that two cents in there. And and, and people need really need to start stop being negative. I'm probably a, a, a guilty as fuck over it too. You know, I, I get negative sometimes and call shit out and say things that are probably inappropriate or anything and and that's not helping the community at all or or, or our, our main goal is is to pump in bags you know we want everybody to hold vibes huddle look look at us innovate and, and attract attention so we can all be in this together and and we all rise you know so that's just my two cents i just jumped in anybody want to update me on what the conversation was I, uh, well said chief boom go ahead oh shit sorry I've got a question directly, Gavin. Um, Gavin, you know how uh, Craig's or Enchain have got all these patents on uh, blockchain and things like that. Uh, I was just wondering how long he's had the current patents, and I was also wondering that they've got a twenty-year sort of they expire in twenty years. So I was just sort of thinking, if Copa or like all these other sort of people are able to bullshit or put off. Uh, everything you know for 10 or 20 years like how do you see that sort of playing out if they're able to if ethereum's still able to be ethereum uh, if all these other blockchains or the whole crypto space is able to bullshit for years and years and years do you think that they could Well, it's a very good question. Very good question. Uh, let, may I ask something real quick? And to hold the question, I don't, I don't mean to be rude, but I, I just want to say something before, before I lose my train of thought and can't think of it again. I'm thinking of something that can hold us all accountable as a community. So I like these ideas of, of I'm sorry to, to totally go off subject, but the, the whole chain race and all that stuff is boring to me. Um, and I have to get it off my chest or I'm going to forget it and we'll never hear it again. So I'm thinking of a way to hold ourselves accountable amongst this community to stay positive, to, to keep the vibes high, to, to, to just keep a, a very positive energy going in this ecosystem that's, that's still uh, so young and, and, and so far away from yet so far away from disruption. But just hold that thought. Any, everybody heard me speak. Everybody heard that thought. Everybody uh, let it be in your mind, let it resonate, and uh, go on with that question. I'm sorry. Bring, uh, talk about your comment, actually, and, and your thoughts here, because I want to share a story. Uh, is it on? Is it Andreas, the gentleman that was at, that was making that comment? Who's the... Andreas? Chief. Okay, Chief. All right, so let me, you know, before we go over to the uh, discussion about the patents, if I may, Bose, I want to just bring up a story here. It's very relevant to exactly what you guys are doing in this space. And I'll tie it back into what I what I started with, and that was, well, so I when when I yeah I'm, I'm leaving college right, and I'm already I'm very very successful at a company. This is a, a furniture company, Macy's General Department Store, but you know I knew it wasn't long term. I I didn't I wouldn't I never wanted to work there at a job like that for very long. I knew there was something better. I I went ahead and I got promised I of this dream that, you know, there was this great opportunity with this other, other company. It was called AmeriQuest. I was going to go in there and I was going to make more money at this job, at this other job. And it was going to be a better environment. I literally, I was like, went in there, interviewed, and I was just super, super excited. 
you know, we're going to knock this thing out of the park, you know? And so I quit my job. I'm, I'm out of college and literally I'm about six months now out of college at this time. And I'm like, all right, I quit, quit the job. And I was making very good money at this job. Gone, flat out left, burned my bridges. I mean, I, I did a terrible job as a, you know, burning my bridges at the job. Like I, I should have left on better terms. But I just walked out. So uh, I couldn't go back and I get to this company and this is very relevant to like everything about this space right now. Right. So we're, I'm promised, I'm promised a minute thing. And that's going to be great. I go in there. I find out that it's the worst out of, out of about 10,000, uh, I say it less about, I don't know, about five or 6,000 branches in the con in the entire nation. This was the last one. It was the worst in the whole place. So there's about 20 guys in an office and they hired me in this branch. And of course they, they make all these wild promises. I'm thinking it's going to be great. Finally, once I get started, I'm there and I find out that it's the lowest, the absolute lowest ranking producing in the entire company, the last in last place, humiliated, you know, and I'm thinking like, wow. So I just left and, and I get in there and all they tell me is they say, I was promised I was going to learn how to make $10,000 a month. Right. I'm, I'm like, you know, you're going to be guaranteed. You're going to learn how to make $10,000 a month. All they did was put paper on my desk and a phone. And they said, make these calls. I went in there and I just literally got, you know, hung up on for about three weeks to a month straight. And I just brutalized it. It was like, this is, this is horrible. Here I am in the worst branch in the company. I left a good job. I'm all the way in last place. Now I'm making all these calls and I'm getting nowhere. Uh, and I go into the guy's office and, um, and I say, listen, you know, you, you guys promised me that you were going to teach me how to make $10,000 a month when I got here. Now, all you've done is make me make these calls and get hung up on and get yelled at and humiliated. And I found out I'm in the worst, worst branch in the whole company. And I said, you know, when is it, when am I going to learn this? When am I going to figure this out? He's like, you know, when's the secret going to come out? And he's like, you already have the secret. I'm like, well, what's the secret? He's like, you know, believing that you can do it. <laughs> you, you don't believe you can do it. So therefore you can't do it and you'll never make it here. You'll never make the thousand of us. And it really, it, it started the shift. It took about another three months. Okay. About another three months of grueling, just absolute humiliation of in the gutters of yell, being yelled at and told no and hung up on over and over and over and over again. But by the fifth month, Okay, this is the very the fifth month in the company. I'd made my determination I was going to be the number one in the whole company. And by the fifth month out of 10,000 people, I hit the number one rank in that entire company nationwide. No looking back. All right. And then I held the ranks for 20 months. And as soon as that happened, I hit the number one spot. I said, all right, guys, I started calling everybody in my fraternity and I got the best guys into the branch. And then we just started moving momentum, building momentum, building momentum. After a year at the company, we were the number one branch in the company. We went from the last, the worst, think of BSV, what the lowest ranking, you know, solid project on coin, coin market cap being the lowest, the most, the most hated, the, the worst of all. That was us. This is the true story. We were the lowest. We were nobody. And, and I'm telling you, I just said, screw it. I'm just going to stick to it. I'm not going to quit. And I'm going to make this, I'm going to do everything I can to make it the best and just start bringing in all the right people, attracting the right guys to the community, and then just committing to it long hours. And eventually it wasn't even eventually it was five months, five months. I was number one. And within one year, we were the number one branch in the whole company. And we completely out of 10,000. Okay. This is not just a small thing. So, I mean, it was, it, it was all about momentum. And once that momentum started, I'm telling you, man, it just caught on like wildfire. The positive like mindset and the moment and the 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 tenacity of just go, go, go. So like this space right here where you commit to it and you're on every every day like this doing a support and you're supporting other people. If you keep that momentum going and you mark it every day. All right. That's day one, day two, day three. All of a sudden you're going to hit day 30 and then you're going to say, shoot, I don't want to quit we'll do 31 days. We'll do 32. Next thing you know, it's going to be, it's going to be 90 days out and the BSV price will be like three, $400. And you won't know, well, did we have something to do with that? Yeah, you did. You did. You did have something to do with that. And it's just going to speed things up. It only just speeds up the, the inevitable momentum because what's, uh, what's unique about Bitcoin. When I say Bitcoin, first of all, the name BSV is bullshit. 
All right. We got to get rid of that name. Uh, I'm sorry that everyone calls it that. That's just my personal opinion. All right. We have a, we have an amazing name. We, the, it's used, it's called Bitcoin and we, we need to take that name back. And that's what this court case will hopefully result in. We'll be able to completely claim it back and get it, get it out of the, the, the mindset of, uh, of scams and, and uh, what it's been associated with, because it's still, I mean, it's what people know when they hear Bitcoin, they still have the, the people who are not embedded in the space they still think good about it. It has an incredible name. There's a small fraction. We're like a little sliver of, of, uh, of what, what could be. And so with or without the name, there's still the technology's there, the people are there and everything's on the right track, you know? And so I just you wanted to share that story with you guys to give you kind of a perspective with where I see things. You know, I'm here because that's where I see things. I've been there. I started at the bottom and worked my way to the top. And that's where BSV is. It's this little unknown. It's unknown or just been completely slammed, but it's not going to be unknown for long. And it's going to have a, re a huge emergence. It will have a huge emergence. And I'm not talking about investments. You know, I tell people do not invest, just participate, do something, build, just get on, you know, get on, play games, have at least one, one, just one, you know, and do and let it let it see where it takes you, because the more people that have one, you think about it in the future, we're going to be transacting in Satoshis. You know, how far out is that going to be a year, two years? It really comes down to how much longer do we have in the fiat system? Do we have another six months, five years? How much longer is fiat going to be around until it just completely becomes worthless? These are these are questions that will that will basically develop this, and so it's. You think about it though, as the fiat system starts to go down, and you know it starts to un unfold. What's been what's been rising in the winds in the wings? Yeah, gold and silver. Yeah, it's it's lawful money and it's it's lawful current. Okay, but who do, who uses gold and silver to transact? Nobody, nobody does. So what do we what do we transition to? You know, I mean, it's literally in the perfect situation right now to transition the momentum for people to have digital cash, electronic cash. I mean, that that's where that's where this is going, you guys. There's no question about it. And so we want to just have that that mindset. It's I mean, think about it. If you have a, if you could just travel to the future just a little bit where what it would be like. I mean, is there any question? Is there any variables that something else is going to be built better than built Bitcoin? You know, one of these SHA-256, is there going to be another chain that's going to be somehow take over the SHA-256 dominance? I mean, I'm just not seeing how. I'd love to, I would love to entertain, a, you know, a discussion on how, but I just don't see how it's going to happen. And so that brings up your, uh, your patent, your patent comments or, you know, questions there, Bose. I mean, you know, if you think about, if you think about how this whole thing is played out now, I was personally there when Satoshi made the announcement in Dubai. All right. I was there and I was the one I was in the room. Now, what in, let me just tell you the story as to what happened. So, you know, he's given the keynote speech and it's, uh, you know, in front of about 500 people and I'm sitting there with Shaway and myself and he, you know, S script guys and, uh, young lady here in a, in a little small group in the back of the room. And he's coming out on stage and he's mapping out, he's mapping out the overall strategy for, you know, Bitcoin. Okay. And it's, it, it's highly, highly strategic uh, strategy in, in an understanding of not only in law, but in the, the economy and the economics portion of it. And in, uh, I would say, almost like a military tactical strategy. Now, he made the very confident statement, which was, which was very humble of him, that he decided that he wasn't going to crush the little guy. Well, he could. Because you asked about the patents, right? You asked, well, what about these patents? Why aren't they being enforced? Well, he decided at that, at that event, and he'd already been working with Xiaowei on this, I don't know how long, a year, two years before, they were going to build Ethereum on Bitcoin, and so it was that that event that they announced the uh, the integration with uh, was it um, the Ethereum programming language Solidity on on uh, Scrypt 
to where one, it was just one, one line of code and you could put solidity right on Bitcoin. And so it was that, it was that announcement that he said, you can either join us. So he gave Ethereum notice. You can join us. We're going to build your project on here for you and save all the money in gas fees, or we'll see you in court. Now, so there's a period where he's letting that happen. Uh, that exact timeline, if it's a year, two years, I don't know. But there's a period, a notice period, an opportunity period for them to begin to join and migrate. It's really the developers. It's the coders. You know, They have to become aware that it's possible, that they can just transition right onto Bitcoin and with solidity and, and still keep doing Ethereum. They can still, they can still use Ethereum. That's fine, but it's on Bitcoin and it becomes a much cheaper project. So that, uh, that has to, first of all, completely be absolutely um, shunned and saying, and, and the Ethereum guys refuse, I guess, to do that with plenty of notice and opportunity. And then at that point, then the patent litigation would, would begin. So that's going to be a judgment call and a strategy call uh, from the top guys at Enchain as to when they would, they would make that, when they would make that decision. Because yes, those uh, the smart contract patent exists on on uh, end chain, at Enchain right now. So you've got a you've got a smart contract patent that was issued before that was applied for before Ethereum started, and Ethereum started coming up with these concepts. So therefore, they are in a alleged a possible. Of course, it's not. We can't say violation until the court determines. But they are in a possible breach of contract. So they got a couple of opportunities. One, they can migrate onto Bitcoin. Or two, they could pay a licensing fee to Enchain. Or three, they can just do nothing. And then at that point, patent, patent litigation will begin. Patent litigation uh, is extremely expensive, extremely tight, tough. And, and they're very, uh, and when patents are written tight, they're hard to get around and beat. You know, they're very brutal. So with the, with the, with the entire fortress of patents around Enchain, some... 4,000 applied for, like 1,000 or something issued. It's like this giant wall, um, you know, around Bitcoin. It's just a giant wall around the entire Bitcoin space. Because if you think, if you, I, wish I, I wish I had the knowledge and the time to really like read and understand every single patent. But, um, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely something we, we got to talk about with Zim or other people and Craig himself, who's really the author of these patents. And uh, I would say, you know, the guy, the creator of Bitcoin is probably the best guy to write the patents, especially if he's, if he understands how to write, you know, legal documents incredibly well. And so um, now it's just, a, but it takes a really thick understanding of whether or not the patents are sound. Are they sound, um, you know, mathematically, scientifically along the lines of Bitcoin? Are they, are they truly sound? That's really going to take a court to determine though, that, uh, but you know, it really cut that part right there. It, comes down to the believing you can do it part. I mean, if the patents are a bluff and Ethereum does nothing, I mean, are the patents a bluff? It's a really, really, I don't think so. I would say I have read the, the Ethereum smart contract patent, the one that was issued. There's two or three around that. And those, those are definitely, are, uh, I would say they are definitely going to be requiring a court's determination. They're not frivolous patents. Those are not frivolous. They're, they're sound at least enough to require determination. So uh, this is a long-term strategy playing out right now in front of us. And I'm just glad and grateful to be on the winning, the winning team, you know, or the team that's going to be winning. Now, I've been on enough losing teams already. I've already found out a hard, the hard way. I mean, anyone else was, uh, was hit hard by the Luna, Luna scam, you know, and I, and that was, that was my, that was my, uh, that was my end all. You know, I said, this is really it. You know, I am not getting slammed by another scam. You know, we, I'd been in, in, in the, in the ICO thing in 2017 and 2016. And I, and I thank God did well on some of them, but you know, there was a lot of scams too. And so once the Luna thing got going, you know, I, I thought I was playing it safe by putting all the, all the profits in UST, the stable coin. And then I remember meeting with Xiao Wei. I, I, we were, I, we were going to go to coffee or something like that. And yeah, right. You know, and I, and I, and I told him, I said, well, my Luna investment just went to zero. It, it was a scam. You know, they, they overnight, it went to 20, it went to 20. It was like, uh, 
20 dollars you know 20 20 cents on the dollars and then i thought no way it's not going to keep going down it can't it's going to go back up it's got to be wrong and then it was like you know two cents or something you know and so it all went to <laughs> and i say that only because we we have to we have to realize that that's what the entire other all these other things are they're just another luna btc is another luna i mean what what's you know, where <laughs> you're in a, you're in a Ponzi scheme, you know? Uh, so it's, uh, it's just mindful that we've got to, we've got to focus on utility and adding all this value for people. There's so much being built right now on, on the Bitcoin space that is allowing people to, going to allow people to literally uh, change the entire internet and the entire world as we know it. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at this from a, a, a really a very, you know, evaluating it from like all these different angles and different people before I really want to put myself out there with this, you know, it's been years before I decided to, to, to do that. You know, I mean, it's been years. I mean, I, for, I was involved in the fork, the Bitcoin forks, you know, I wouldn't call them fork the splits now where BTC forked and BCH then forked again from the original protocol as BSV never, never, never forked at all. It just stayed along the same line. So I was involved in that and I was watching it all happen, kind of playing out, then investigating everything. But it wasn't until I went to the Dubai, you know, met, uh, met people in Dubai in person. And then again in London and I met, uh, met everybody, you know, sat down with everybody, I mean, not everybody, but a lot of people. And it really all, it all came, it all came to light that this is real. You know, this is, this is not uh Bitcoin as a company and it, it's, it's here to stay, guys. This is a long-term thing. It's not going to happen overnight, but like spaces like this is going to keep on building momentum. So there's a few minutes on a soapbox for me. So, uh, you know, we can table back over to you guys uh, for a few minutes. <laughs> uh, you know, but it, it really is a, uh, it really is a momentum thing. Okay. And that's where, where I think you guys are on the right track. I'm really grateful to be a part of that because, you know, we come in here, we can start growing it. I could drive tra people traffic in here. They're going to want to learn about this. How do I, how do I get support? You know, if we have a support like this, that's huge because, you know, we can, <laughs> and uh, it's, you know, Motivational speak speeches are fun for me, and I, I like doing things like that. It's a lot of fun. I've done a lot of a lot of speeches. I had a lot of I had a company that you know we had about a hundred and something guys in a big sales sales group, and every day we'd get up and do a motivational talk on different things. But this is not just you know this is what we're doing here is much bigger than uh, motivation. You know, we're this is actually world changing. I mean, here's. Here's something I'm trying to drive this point home into another, other, other groups. Okay. Of people. And one group is like about this, this law. Okay. I wouldn't say law. It's more of a, a freedom center group where, you know, you got group with, with moms and they're upset about political things and they want to, they want freedom. They, they just want freedom. They want to be left alone. And, and it really, I'm, what I'm really trying to get to them so begin to open their minds about is like, well, when you begin to control your money, then you're not relying on someone else. And not when I say control your money, I mean, having a lot of money, that's not what I'm saying is, I mean, actually you transact peer to peer with the next guy, like they used to do with gold and silver, like you still could do right now, but we can't do that on the internet. And so, but when we can transact peer to peer through Bitcoin, Bitcoin SV, we actually you know what that makes us sovereign because eventually then we don't need anybody at all in between us. We're not relying on anyone. And once you're no longer relying on someone for your money, that's what sovereignty is. Cause think about it. What, what is the, uh, what is the one thing that, that is always the focus of control, the, the money. Who, he who controls the money controls the controls the world. Isn't hasn't that been the theme theme for the entire like last two three hundred years maybe throughout history, and and this is this this is what makes this uh, invention here so unique and special is that it's it's for the first time puts the sovereignty back into the people.
through my path, I ended up uh, evaluating a, a few different options. I think one that I kind of landed on at the time that I liked was EOS. I liked the model, it made sense. You rent server space, basically. You know, there was a, an, an, a, an analogy to the real world, but I also tried BCH, and this is the important part. Um, I had liked Bitcoin before 2017 when I started developing on Ethereum, but you couldn't really do what we wanted to do. So we had to use Ethereum. And right around that time on BCH, there were these couple of services. One was um, Memo, Memo Cash, and they had just introduced SLP tokens. Um, so it was like the first version of tokens on, on Bitcoin Cash. And I thought that was really cool. So I, I noticed that we could start programming on these flavors of Bitcoin. And I found a tool that was called Bitcoin Computer at the time. Uh, you may know the very similar technology called Run, which, you know, kind of dominated for about three years. But either way, back then I was working on tool set or with a tool set that was called Bitcoin Computer. And um, the two options were Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin SV. And for me, like I had done some research, but I didn't really deep dive into it. You know, the first couple of pages of Google were like Bitcoin SV is a scam. So... I chose Bitcoin BCH at the time, and um, the the prices weren't that much different. But in a couple of months, the prices dropped on BCH. Uh, sorry, dropped on BSV, and all I had to do in in the code was like change one setting, right? I didn't have to write any new code. I just had to change one setting, and all of a sudden, I could send more transactions, and it was cheaper for me. And so there was no turning back after that. So I think what Bose just described as a path forward for people who want to develop on Bitcoin to find Scripts script for BTC, find that S script can do so much more than it allows for them to do on BTC and just toggle that button real quick. They're going to try it and fall in love with it and probably not look back. That's just my, my thought on how this is going to work. Hmm. That seems like exactly what happened with you. You, you tried it and it just absolutely, there was no going back. Right. So from my own personal lived experience, I can see this happening to a lot of other developers too. Oh. Seems like that was even before. There we go. <laughs> yeah. We got it. I mean, and now it's even, it's even grown so much more since then. I guess it's even easier since the time that you were probably getting into it it's it's different but it is much better so back then you know we hadn't had a one gigabyte block yet now we have four gigabyte blocks regularly so i was taking some things on faith right that these big blocks would be possible you don't have to take that on faith anymore um i had to take on faith back then that fees would drop instead of increase that sounded illogical in the face of like how quote bitcoin works but over the four years that have, you know, that since then, we've seen transaction fees do nothing but go down. And when it seemed like it might be in the best interest to raise them a little bit, Tal was like, nope, 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 we're paranoid or nothing. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, some of the things that might have continued to push people away when I made that decision back then, those considerations don't exist anymore. And we've like on this network created technological feats of advancement that if you're willing to look at, and I think more developers will be willing to look at with, if it just takes like a toggle switch, um, it, it makes plainly obvious that SV is a, a better place to be developing. Wow. That's very encouraging. Super encouraging. Sounds good, right? Sounds good. And then the question is, how fast can we do this? So we, earlier we were talking about bridges. So you've, you've seen a lot of these bridges. You've seen a lot of this DeFi stuff. On the other chains, obviously you had a bad experience with Luna. One of the biggest problems that we have on SV is being so, what's the word? Uh, disconnected from the cryptocurrency industry that we can't get Tether and USDC liquidity on this chain. So there's people that come over, build DeFi things now and then, but they kind of, they, they give up and go away. But uh, we've been talking about bridges this evening and like bridging stuff in. 
uh, crossing over from one chain to the other that kind of thing. So, and I mean, what Zach's talking about is Bitcoin script, but as you mentioned earlier, people can compile Ethereum contracts using the escrow, uh, shall we lose Ethereum compiler. So maybe we can do that. Maybe he can do that with the Cardano logic as well. And maybe he can do it with, I don't know, the Solana logic, right? And just, just bear in mind that those guys are companies. So yeah, Gavin, you have companies. any hodls? Hey, Chief, I can't add, add you for some reason. Maybe try leaving and coming back. Thank you, sir. Hey, Gavin, um, do you, you have any hodls, sir? Pardon? Do you own any of the HODL token? HODL token? Yes, sir. It's a, it, 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 it's a token, Gavin, on a BSV that's like a lock to mint. Um, <clears throat> that like uh, was sort of came out a few months ago, this new type of protocol where you can lock some Bitcoin for a certain duration. And then as a, and then it, 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 it mints for you like a, a BSV 20 token or a LRC 20 token. Hmm. Yeah, why I'm asking is because right now there's developers who developed HODL Locker, they're looking to potentially, now that HODL Locker is open source, there have been discussions from developers saying they could potentially implement this token called HODL, which is the first lock to mint on-chain asset that are in history, and potentially implement it with HODL Locker. I was just that's why I was just curious if you knew about the token. I am fight of it. I fight of it. I fight of it. If I if I raise a hundred BSV, would you eat a poo sandwich? Oh come on, Harry, we're not going there. I'm gonna kick you, bro. Huh. I just so the argument I heard against using HODL as like some base currency for HODL Locker is that the 21 million HODL can't be divided. There's zero decimal places after the token. I mean, after the number. Yeah, that's a use case. That's a feature, not a bug. It's like, you, you know, what's funny, Zach, is, um, is Bose actually used ChatGPT and asked uh, AI um what could be a solution for that and the ai responded that um you can just prepay a miner it'll be an account based system that you have with the miner but you would just prepay them for like ten thousand transactions worth or something i don't think he would appreciate being called chat gpt <laughs> <laughs> but yeah exactly um, I, was, I was gonna say you know it would be great if you could we could put that together like what is the ultimate goal here uh where you guys are taking on this uh it's really a gargantuan task. I mean, a constant space for 30 days. I mean, that, that's like a, a giant. I mean, it's an amazing goal. Like, but, and so in order to stay motivated, <laughs> it is. It's a hard goal to hit, man. That's a freaking big deal. And so when you do that, like, what is it that you want to achieve uh, by doing it? You know, what, what's the ultimate? I think we, I mean, I think we need a website at least. And one of us is building a... Um... A kind of version of the spaces so you have to pay to speak and then when you i think well you know what i'm not quite sure about the how, how it works uh bsv is bitcoin you want to you want to talk to gavin about this or have you got your your head in code at the moment he might have passed out he was uh did the legendary 14 hour space earlier today he's in denmark so he's maybe uh getting disease Yeah, I was a little bit in and out. Thank you uh, so much uh, for the compliment. <laughs> oh, legend! Uh, legend. <laughs> I'm so tired, but thank you. Uh, it's super awesome. You bring the vibes, Kevin. Um, it really is very refreshing to hear your uh, like thoughts, just in general, about Bitcoin and how everything is should put together. I didn't catch what you asked me uh, to speak on. Well, you know, the really in simple terms is the goal of the, of the space. I mean, some like, I mean, the, it sounds like the goal is to be on the space consistently for a month or for the next 30 days. And what is the outcome? And I think one of the co things that Bo Bose you mentioned was a possible website and, and then the website could, could do certain functions like 
potentially uh, other attract other was it was it ethereum and other projects well i i mean like um, i just registered that literally found out but uh but but no bsv is bitcoin the bitcoin broadcast he's building something go ahead bitcoin broadcast oh yeah okay thank you so much um so i have listened a lot and tried and participate with you guys uh, and and hear all the mints and i came up with sort of the idea of starting bitcoinspaces.net and uh, i hope for that place to be uh, through proof of work uh, mainly uh, by locking or tokens uh, to create sort of more incentivized um, you know spaces where people can really hone in on the topics that they want to develop inside of uh, the decentralized space we call bitcoin um so i mean yeah in in general we'll be doing the same thing we're doing right now uh, just sort of with the bitcoin layered on top of it uh, gamified you could call it gamified x spaces i guess um, just with bitcoin um and yeah i guess that's the general idea 